Hey, welcome back to Molly Familiar, and let's just cut to the chase. Cut the bull honky. Today we'll be talking to animation power couple Colton and Sarah, aka Studio Hun. They are an animation couple that does animations on YouTube, they do TikToks, and they have a spooky Halloween aesthetic, which I think is perfect for when this hopefully comes out in October. Mm. Please stick with me. I promise this is going somewhere. You don't have to, but just, you know, like and subscribe and all that, you know. Meh. You ever been to a party where everything is going swell? And you turn to somebody, say I'm gay, I hope you're well. And they say, ah, we've met before. And you say, ah. in action everybody hi how's it going dun 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 it's a studio hun uh, uh, Whoa. <laughs> we're fabulous i'm known for my zinger intros baby. <laughs> thank you for rhyming it was nice it's the least i can do for you guys you guys have been super sweet ever since i met you i want to say like 2019 maybe 2018 it was that halloween when i was doing a, a week of production assisting for BlizzCon, yeah. uh, which yeah. was right around the May controversy stuff. You weren't responsible for all that controversy, were you? Oh, yeah. That's why I was demoted to production assistant, see? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. J just to clarify to the audience, Colton has nothing to do with BlizzCon anymore. No. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Spoiler. I've worked a total of five weeks with Blizzard over three years but that brought you to la right no coding behind the website uh that brought me to la um good old fifi folios because uh programming has work and art had less work for you know freshly out of college people well you guys weren't freshly out of college wait a second wait a darn minute well not in 2019 but we were there in 2014 yeah yeah we've okay. been there for a bit Mm -hmm. That's right. You guys used to live here, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm so so. I'm such a bad interviewer. I <laughs> yeah, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Jimmy, put up the embarrassing sign and have a big old arrow pointing to me. <laughs> yeah. Embarrassed. <Gage>. Embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. You know how LA is. Like, if you don't like live next to somebody, you don't see them a lot. No. Yeah, that's sort of sort of the isolating thing about LA is that everyone's here, but they're all so focused on their own projects or their own troubles that sometimes uh, we, we miss a couple of people that we might get along with. Yeah. Or not get along with. That's the thing. Did we get along with Gage? Find out <laughs> at the end. No. <laughs> find, 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 stick till the end to find out. Uh, no, I, I, we met at a Halloween party because I remember you were dressed as uh, Willem Dafoe's character, or was it Robert Pattinson's character from The Lighthouse? Well, Sarah was um, a siren, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and so I was going like as like somebody that the siren would lure in, just like a general boater, sailor, lighthouse keeper, and then the movie the lighthouse came out and so like you and some other people were like oh the lighthouse movie uh, the robert pet i was like yeah yeah that's, that's <laughs> what i am mm -hmm. which that works <laughs> yeah no, it worked great yeah. yeah that that actually happens in the movie um oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah no <laughs> he gets lured by a siren at that party i went over to you because i was like hey you are the freaking uh the blue morpho from Venture Bros, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you were yeah. like, somebody with taste. <laughs> somebody with taste. Yeah. I specifically remember dressing that up for work because we did Halloween costumes at work. And no one knew it because I'm not an animation job at work. 
So people are like, I've never heard of the Venture Brothers. Mm-hmm. But but then I went to this animation ass party, and every every third person was like, Oh yeah, you're the Blue Morph- Morpho, obviously. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> who doesn't yeah. who who Good. doesn't know the Blue Morpho from Venture Brothers? Good. Good. <laughs> But yeah. you were you were one of the first, and I was like, I, I will get along with this person just dandy. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys aren't in L.A. anymore, correct? Where are you guys right now? New York. Yes. Yep. We are leaving it there. <laughs> and we are. No, 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 no. I wasn't being like, okay, what's your address? What's your zip code? <laughs> uh... Gage Doxing Agnew. Yep. I'll just That's say really upstate. Exciting. I mean, people will see my Instagram and I usually tag where we live, but like upstate New York. If people really want to know, I have my Instagram, I have my TikToks, yep. and I have the precise location. Uh, oh, no. There. <laughs> Here are some written instructions. Sarah, no! <laughs> Dox yourself. But yeah, we, we are in New York State now because uh, during that good old initial pandemic we wanted to get back to family and we also wanted to be able to live without a roommate who also was now working from home and we were in a tiny place that was like not it didn't have three offices in it no you know oh and like kitchen table stuff and making it work it was like time to move on yeah that was rough yeah and we miss I, those seasons. Oh my god, seasons are great. I miss, I miss seasons an awful lot, and I miss rain. Well, I say <laughs> I miss rain, but then every time I'm uh, I go home to Florida to visit, it rains, and I'm like, this stinks. This would never happen to California. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys do get a lot of rain, Flor- Florida. Oof. It's one extreme to the other. So yeah. I I, sh- I should find a good in between somewhere in there. A classic gagey locks and the three bears scenario. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'll go to Ohio and say just right. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Uh. I, I just picked a random state. Is there something wrong with Ohio? Oh, what? Ooh, <laughs> what is what it isn't wrong? With wrong? Ohio? I think Ohio is like after Florida. Gage, you're well aware of that. Florida is kind of like the butt of the joke with the U.S. Sure. It, ha- it has a good reputation. For yeah. That. A bad reputation. And then Ohio is like a close second. Can you think of another state besides Ohio that also like gets made fun of a lot? It used to be New Jersey. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I would think New Jersey. Jersey and Alabama would be up there as well. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Hey, what yeah. state do you live in? Leave it in the comments down below and we'll shit on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All states are great. We just drove through Ohio several times and like the drivers were instantly the worst, the most like angry people that you yeah, ever saw. Yeah, <laughs> really aggressive. Yeah. Just the worst yeah. time I had driving was not actually here in LA, but in Miami. People were going off, but I think it was like spring break or something there. So oh. I can't. You give them a pass. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a pass, Miami, but you're on thin ice. Yeah. Which is which is weird considering you're the Sunshine State, but whatever. Mm. Well, global warming, buddy. Global warming. <laughs> Who knows? So, <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing nowadays? Because I've seen your uh, YouTube stuff, and you've done a lot of small cartoons, such as Motorcat and Dunkachino. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the epic Dunkachino and Friday Night Funkin' crossover. Dunk! Cachino. Someone had to do it, all right? <laughs> Look, if it wasn't me, it was it was gonna be some other schmuck. Some yes. other guy. And they wouldn't have done it as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what animation is about. It's about stepping up to the plate when Somebody hasn't yet stepped up to the plate yet, you know? I say that all the time for artists. I was like, hey, if you don't like something that someone's putting out, <laughs> just do it yourself and mm-hmm. do it better and make the stuff you want to see. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't know why I wanted to see that. <laughs> Sorry. What? Anyway. What? Dunkachino or yeah. Friday Night Funkin'? I think I was in a mood. I was hoping for views. How long of a mood were you in where you're like, this whole animation process, because it looks great. I, th- I think it looks I get, gorgeous. I think concept execution was like two weeks, so, and that's while working, so it like wasn't that bad, you know? 
Oh, okay. But uh, it worked out on Twitter because Senor Palo got a hold of it on the retweet action. Nice. On YouTube, it's just sitting at like a cool 600. <laughs> and so I was like, eh. That's fine. It's out there. Maybe once... They're they're doing like a full Friday night Funkin' game, so I maybe maybe they'll pick up. Maybe you'll get a second yeah. wave. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, it will. I know it. <laughs> it will <laughs> absolutely will. Uh, but what are you guys up to nowadays? So Studio Hun is our collective name. So that's basically the name we came up with. Um, the origins of that are essentially we call each other Hun a lot, and it became a joke with our friends. And they kind of started referring to us as the Huns, like, oh, did you invite the Huns to the picnic? Or, oh, did you like, you know, it, it just kind of became this, this joke. Um, so that's where Studio Hun came from. That is kind of our collective name for when we do projects together, which has been on a small hiatus because of just with work, Colton has a great job now, and I've been kind of pursuing uh, my own endeavors. Um, so as far as what we're working on, it's been mainly personal stuff. I have one project in mind. I like it's it's a bigger thing that I want to have come out next Halloween, and that will be a a Studio Han thing. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. But as far as us together, it's so far just been the Etsy shop, which I also want to update and add more things to that. I'm I'm sorry. Do you have a URL for that or something? Uh, <laughs> Etsy.com Etsy. slash Etsy. Studio Hun. Yep. Slash Studio Hun. All one word. Jimmy, put that on the screen. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Oh, That's beautiful. Jimmy, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> From what I hear, Colton's working as a compositor, which is uh, a job in art. A lead compositor? <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. <laughs> we we fight for those, for those titles. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I, I interrupted you. No, 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 yeah. you're fine. I'm, I'm just laying the groundwork for you guys. I'm just saying, yeah, you're a compositor who is also a lead. And uh, Sarah is working on like TikTok and YouTube. And I've been enjoying your YouTube and TikTok, by the way, Sarah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Colton, you're, compo <laughs> you're compositing. I'm enjoying less because I haven't seen much of it yet. But yeah. I, I, I assume it's fantastic. How's that going, <laughs> bud? It, it's going good. I mean, shoot, you can see non-lead compositing work on the uh, Aqua Dunk side pieces. They are on YouTube. They are free to watch for everybody. <laughs> Time. Where are your dancing shoes? The last one came off back at exit 19 with the rest of that leg. If I had nerve endings, my body would be a road map of pain. Well, it's been a while, my friend. A few months or... 18 years, dumbass. Time sure does fly, don't it? No, it doesn't actually. Cats fly, birds, what else flies? What the fuck is wrong with you? I mostly worked on five out of the ten... They did like a 10 episode run of like Aqua Teen shorts on the Adult Swim YouTube channel. And so like I animated and composited the characters in there. So that was a dream come true. I worked on Saturday morning all-star hits, which is colloquially named Smash. And that's on Netflix. That's got a lot of fun people. That SNL guy, is it Kyle Mooney? He's got the curly hair. Yeah, yeah that's Kyle Mooney. Yeah, Kyle Mooney. The only curl-haired uh, SNL member, by the way. Very strange. Ah, oh, we need more representation, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Worked on that and the Aqua Teen movie coming out this November. Ooh. Uh, I think Blu-ray and like HBO Max. And then just... Did they announce that, by the way? They did. That's not an NDA thing. I okay. have retweeted right. the trailer for it. Just making sure, because I'm still waiting for that Venture Brothers movie. I know. I hope it's not getting canned in the mega mergers oh my going God, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we can talk about that afterwards. Cause yeah. yeah. But yeah, big thing, though, is uh, since, since June? I don't know. Since season two of Hell of a Boss, I've been 
I, I went from compositor to lead compositor with good old Mike Bogsy as my co-lead -compos co compositor. And uh, we're just doing some great freaking compositing, which everyone knows what that is, so I don't have to explain it, you know. <laughs> But it's going great, and it's it has allowed me to like not panic about uh, finding work. That's always nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's kind of led to me like enjoying not being burnt out and like living life after work, like biking and fiddling with a piano for the first time, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's pretty chill. Pretty chill. Yeah. yeah, that's a little known fact. There's actually life outside of the workplace. I, I don't, not a lot of people know this. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't. I think it's become a problem for a lot of people because they're like, oh, I have to get to work an hour early and I have to stay until I finish whatever task I do. I'm like, no, just go in when you're meant to go in and leave right at five. <laughs> that's yep. what I think. Yes. That's the best. That's Quiet the best quitting thing. or whatever they're calling it. It's, yeah, it's absolute bull crap. Especially after the pandemic. Well, I say after the pandemic, but especially with all the pandemic stuff going on, that um, it, it just kind of puts into perspective how much work we actually put in versus yeah. what we need to put in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but your your, uh, your lead compositing is on the first episode of Hell of a Boss, which is, I assume is out. Well, I say first episode. First episode of season two, right? Yeah. Yeah, which uh, is maybe my favorite episode yet. That was pretty exciting. I was like, awesome. I, I love this one. And I've got like the little leadership role going on. So really good. Really check it out. Yeah, yeah. I haven't checked it out yet because, you know, I'm a bad friend. But <laughs> it, it's also really nice when you work on a project that's not your own, but also something that you're really passionate about. Because what a lot of people don't know is like, sometimes you get stuck in a job just because it pays. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when you genuinely enjoy the material, it makes it that much easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And then there's also like other side of the coin to that too, where it's like whenever I have been in a creative job, there's been times where I'm like, I'm just creative all the time because most of us, we have our jobs and then we have our side hustles or our, our p passion projects that we're working on. And so we're just constantly being creative while that, is like starts as great. I think you just burn out quicker. Sometimes I envy people that have non-creative jobs that are just making coffees or very mindless nine to five clock in clock out. And then they get to be creative. Um, I feel like they burn out less, but I know it's always the grass is greener situation because I know if I had one of those jobs, then I would be like, I just want a creative job. So it's right. it's yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and i'm sure there's like baristas or fast food workers that are like man if i could just be at a creative job i would be creative all the time yeah <laughs> talking about baristas though like future side hustle of sarah and i like a dream project would be to like do a uh a little like late night coffee shop yes um, if that's ever possible that yeah. would be the way to go. There are spooky themes involved. I will not say any names because these yeah, ideas are Don't give it away, hon. Don't give it no, away. No, no, no. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> the baristas will be dead people, dare I say. Yes. <laughs> All right, we got to start over, hon. He knows. <laughs> yep. I, yeah. You can't take me out because if uh, if you kill me, I'll just come back as a ghost barista. We'll have to hire you, <laughs> son of a bitch. All right. <laughs> That's the genius of it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, no, you guys seem like you have a lot of side hustles in mind. Uh, because I know Sarah's doing TikTok and Colton, you mentioned you're doing piano. It seems like there's so many creative avenues you can go down. Which one are you focusing on right now? What classifies as like a side hustle? I guess because right now I'm trying to make uh, content creation my job, which would be TikTok and YouTube. I guess I wouldn't classify that then as a side, like, like just for fun. If we're just talking purely fun hobbies, I would say roller skating, which I haven't done in a little bit, which I need to, I need to do that. Um, that's like my purely for fun, learning something new uh, activity. As far as like creative, like hopefully 
for money, it, yeah, it would be it would be a uh, TikTok and YouTube, and it's been going good. You know, there's there's of course like anything, uh, there's like lulls and there's like creative humps, um, and both platforms are so different. But which is nice though. At the same time, like if every platform would just stop trying to be TikTok, then they would realize that what they have is actually great because. I I love the long format of YouTube. Um, I know they're trying to do the YouTube shorts, which no one wants, but whatever. But I love kind of going back and forth between thinking of like short form ideas and then thinking of long form and not not needing to like stress about taking an idea and like packaging it up into a minute long and that's it. Or elongating a ten second. Correct. Idea. Exactly. Colton, what 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 about you? Uh, what what you been up to? So it's been nice just working. It's not really nine to five. It's it's nine to whatever I feel like. I'd say piano. I've been up to a the piano was like kind of early in the year. I was really trying it out, but I kind of need to like get a piano teacher because like doing both hands and chords and just reaching around like it is tough um but it's fun so that is my fun time hobby legos have come back around into my life hell yeah 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 look at oh yeah I freaking love i love this set that's a hobby like, that you that is, love come for on sure is legos yeah and that's a hobby no yeah no totally it's dare i say i would say it's a creative hobby because you gotta because then you break it apart constantly and you build something else too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The world is your oyster with a bucket of Legos. So those are like, that, that's hobby time. But I would say, because I was doing like short animations. Uh, the last one, it was a big spooky monster in a house little thing. The title I never really like was satisfied with. So I'm not saying it. Okay. <laughs> Just if you go to Studio On, it's the last upload down there. I put that out. It was like in January or February and like no one really like saw it and that's fine. It's okay to make things just yeah. for yourself. But, but I was trying to make things for people to see. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, if I may interject, a lot of people are like, oh, just do it for the art. Do it just because of you. However, if, if no one's watching your project, it does get a little demoralizing being like, well, I, I worked nine, 900 hours on this and three people have seen it so yeah uh, yeah i i mean that 100 percent brings you down yeah yeah you might have like a a few fans a few friends that really love it like villa loving motorcat mm. I, he's he's its biggest fan i think yeah. um Aww. it did hit this point where i was like I'm just gonna like not worry about like fitting in every moment of free time with working on an animation. I'm going to uh, go for like a longer term passion project. Uh, and so there is this thing, Go Go Crush, that like I'm designing and writing on um, that I kind of want to pilot out, you know, like uh, once I have it all set up, you know, maybe there will be a fund razor or i'll have money set aside to hire people to help me make it but uh it's like about a little goblin and a golem because i love golems and i love fantasy settings and uh them just kind of striking out freelance style basically but writing's going good with that because i've always been very like self-conscious about my writing and the cartoons like trying to like make sure it's hitting and stuff and really makes more than just me laugh. So I'm really taking my time with it, loving the results. Um, but I'm not posting about it all the time because people say, do it for yourself. So like for right now, it's for myself, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And right. um, yeah, and I'm, I'm enjoying that. And it's kind of feeling like almost a year off from posting all the time. Not that I posted all the time before, but like, constantly working towards posting and making things for people to see. Uh, and so that's going well, but it's a long-term side hustle basically. It's the long, long answer of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. How uh, how long are you planning that uh, uh, project to be? Uh, like runtime wise? So like a small, small critique of Hell of a Boss is um, 
the first episode was like maybe 10 minutes or something and then it like kept it's, it's got longer which is like great for fans but like it's like hard on production luckily like you know there's funding and everyone's still get paid on all that but like why why not just like make smaller episodes that could come out quicker is what mm -hmm. i'm thinking so i'm i'm trying to write uh like five minute episodes and i want to have like the, the ultimate plan is to have like three five minute episodes to come out consecutively as like a uh pilot season of sorts so that people can get a taste for all that has to offer and then decide if they are fans or if a um, hundred people only see it you know <laughs> sort of like a season zero of uh, mystery science theater oh i did not know about, but but yes that sounds right sounds right no i think they did it for uh mystery science theater did it for like a Correct me if I'm wrong, Jimmy, but um, they did it for like a uh, like a local station, and then they got picked up for uh, a slightly bigger network mm -hmm. after oh. after their initial run. Oh, I love them! Yeah, there's a lot of like uh, like little internet comedy shows that became big network, th like Workaholics, I think was one of them, or something. Mm. Um, yeah, so this that stuff happens. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Yeah, that that's. It'll probably be out by the time we finish with this. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm going for like smaller bites and it's been fun with the writing. Just like you end up with like 10 pages and it's just like, all right, let's get that out of there. It's too long. Um, <laughs> and it gets better each time. Fantastic. And uh, I, I also did want to ask about uh, Halloween because Halloween <gasps> is coming up. And uh, I, I wanted to ask what you guys' Halloween plans are. Either on a per creative level or a personal level, I'll let you guys interpret it. The first thing that that is like Halloween themed um, is we're gonna we're gonna head on over to the the Disney Oogie Boogie Bash. Um, oh. Yeah, we're doing a little LA trip to see some family. That will be October second that we're there. Well, it used to be an annual tradition um, for me and my dear friend, Cameron. But since COVID, um, that kind of put the, you know, uh, yeah, that, that kind of screwed that up. But Pumped the brakes on that. Yeah, yeah. pumped the brakes. Um, but we're doing it this year. I wouldn't classify myself as a Disney adult, but I do enjoy Disney during Halloween. And I told Colton, I said... You know, you don't have to go. You you have an out. You can say no. It will not no. make me sad because Colton is even less so a Disney fan than, than I am. So, but he's going. He's going. We're both going. I love that Disney gives jobs to people. That's yes. great. Yes. <laughs> we do love that. If I had to say yeah. one good thing about Disney is that it gives money to people that work for them. And then they <laughs> give right. money back to see <laughs> they the movies more and money shows. Back. Yeah. <laughs> to make crappy live action remakes. Oh, Ain't whatever. that the truth? <laughs> yeah. It's jobs. So is it crappy? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I would love a job on that at some point, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just usually, I just take the silence approach when yeah. something like a Pinocchio live action remake comes out and it, there's issues like, you know what? There's good stuff in there. It's probably better than like 90% of the things I've made. So who's to say if it's bad or not, <laughs> I'm not going to. It's just like no <laughs> just... one wanted it. It's, I think that's the usual complaint is like, why did we ask for this? Was it Cameron that was telling me this? I can't remember, but that that Walt specifically wanted remakes to keep the movies fresh. That oh. there, was a, there was a time, I forget what time amount that he said, but basically he wanted remakes to occur every whatever, maybe it was a two decades, maybe it was a decade. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. But that he was very against sequels, I guess, which that's funny because there's been a sequel for like every single 
Like the two Disney, and a half. Yeah, every single Disney animated film, there's been like at least a sequel. I didn't even hear. I was like, wait, there's like a Cinderella, like three. Like it just, and then the Lion King, like the two and a half, like what? And that's like beloved by fans. Had no idea. Well, enough of that. Uh, Timon, what are you doing? I'm fast forwarding to the part where we come in. But you can't go out of order. Au contraire, my porcine pal. I've got the remote. But everyone's gonna get confused. We gotta go back to the beginning of the story. We're not in the beginning of the story. Yes, we were the whole time. Yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> then why don't we tell them our story? <laughs> Was Pocahontas 2 the superior movie? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that that movie was terrible. The fact that her and John are like irrelevant after the first movie. It's like her and this other dude. And John is like, oh, okay. Like he just takes the back seat to this other random colonizer guy. It that just threw me for I was like, what is happening? Anyway, we went down a little <laughs> rather hole. <laughs> We went down a I have an ask for Jimmy, all right, if this is okay. Um I've kinda I've kinda worked the joke into something that works. It was a realization with Pinocchio. So I want I want Jimmy to pull up a picture of Geppetto and Pinocchio and then text on uh Geppetto that says Pinocchio and then text on Pinocchio that says Pinocchio's monster to correct people. On the oh. correct naming. I think, oh. see, I think it works. I think it, <laughs> I think it does. How, <laughs> if it you works. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down to see if that works. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure Pinocchio is the doll and the, uh, never and mind. And there, therein lies the funny. It's more complicated funny. It's a bit layered funny. It's a little bit more nuanced of funny. Yeah. It's funny because it's stupid and confuses anyone. There, something I'm up. certainly <laughs> confused. Yeah. <laughs> um, another side note, when Sarah's mom sets up a punchline, she goes, now here's the funny. Um, and I she absolutely does. love that. Yeah. Now here's the funny. Yep. Uh, she's a queen. She is a queen. Um, um about Dis Disney Halloween plans. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing yeah. that. Um, that's going to be <laughs> fun and festive. And then as far as... The rest of the season, it's just like the Super Bowl. Would I describe this as the Super Bowl for me? Sarah's uh, camera decided to yes. get too hot to handle. Too hot so to she's handle. She's with Colton. She's she's with Colton yeah. now. It couldn't handle looking at her. It was like <laughs> that's totally what it oh is. Oh my! Oh my God! Yeah, absolutely. That's what the camera. That's the camera's words, not mine. Thank you. <laughs> I would have had to have gotten over there and kicked your ass. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. But yeah, if you guys are coming to LA, like swing by the Gay Jagnew residence. Uh, I would love to have you, and maybe I'll bake you some banana bread if I feel like it. Banana, I love banana bread. bread. Yeah. We do love yeah. a good banana bread. Yeah, it's true. I, I love banana bread. But uh, yeah, this uh, this Halloween is like the Super Bowl of uh, your TikTok season or your content season, I should say. Correct, yeah. Sarah? It's like a wonderful thing, and it's also a very stressful thing. I think anyone that has. A th you know, any anything that you love that you're passionate about and that you make content about, like Academy Awards season or like whatever, if there's like a holiday or an event that you love, it's it's stressful. It like you love it, but it's also very stressful. And so and you also put a lot of pressure on yourself. So sure. whenever Halloween comes around, I'm always like, oh, I got to be, I got to be like thinking of like these cool ideas. I got to be doing crafts and like, what are some like cool like DIYs that I could do? And I need to be pushing stuff out. And you also want to like make it to 
events to have fun and enjoy the season. Correct. You and also want to have find fun. Yeah. Out where that's going on. Right. Yeah. Right. You want to enjoy the holiday too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, just pre do it beforehand, and then. But it's like a lot of the a lot of the things that I make is also reliant on like things happening. So like whether that's events or like decor coming out, like I do a lot of Halloween decor hunting. And if I'm doing like a craft, I need supplies to be in stores, which means has to be Halloween season. So, you know, I, I try to do as many things ahead of time, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. And I'm doing things the week before Halloween and I'm stressed out. But but like knowing, though, that once it's November 1st, that I'm just like, uh, you know, like chilling, then mm -hmm. that 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 helps. You see you see the light at the end of the tunnel. I do love it. I don't want to make it sound like I like dread. Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. But it's just stressful. Yeah, I think a lot of artists do that with at work. They yeah, they just have to vent sometimes. And But, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing it because we like doing it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And a Merry Christmas to you. And I think that's a, a good way to wrap up the podcast. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Colton and Sarah, so much for coming, especially during this spooky season where you have so much going on. <laughs> well, thank you for having us, Gage. Yeah. And Jimmy, <laughs> wherever you are. Jimmy. Jimmy. The big Jimmy up in the sky. We're we're wishing you come down and give us that uh, <laughs> Pinocchio meme. Yes. I'm sorry. That wasn't that great, but it, it feels like there's something there. Um, and if I was still making we animated shorts. We need to workshop it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, and now I'm a little more familiar with Studio Hun. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any life-changing advice to give us before we go? I think I would say something to the effect of like... Uh, Set your boundaries mm -hmm. with work mm -hmm. and make sure that you are living your life, that yes. it's not just creation all the time yep. or hustling. Yep. Like take that pause to uh, enjoy a hobby yep. like a piano, bike riding, whatever, making bread. I've been making some bread <laughs> lately. Bread's great. Like do that stuff. Yeah, set those boundaries. And I that's a little bit of a privileged thing to say sometimes because, like, you know, there's a lot of... I'm going on. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, I, was, I was commenting on the, the smack oh, the for, the, for the audio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. And the video. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes but I, you but have I to understand. Yeah. full-time yeah. hustle, but live it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. F find your moments to be free. And, you know, in a creative position, that's what, like, returns your creativity uh, and inspires you um so you'll come back stronger uh yeah so do that shit and respect yourself and be like um no i'm not working past six sorry <laughs> not sorry though love you for sure <laughs> employer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wouldn't i wouldn't say that to my boss but to each their own yeah i would say the same thing and then i would also say comparing so like if as an artist, like don't compare yourself to other people. I've had to really work through that and, and be like, like, it's okay to be inspired by people and to look up to someone. I mean, we all, there isn't an artist that doesn't look up to someone. Like, how did you become an artist then if you, yeah. So it's, it's very in our nature to, to look up and to be inspired by people. But yeah, just focus on yourself and your journey and that all of our journeys are different and they don't look the same. And some people get places quicker. Some people get there slower. Some people change paths and do something different and then come back to whatever they, you know, it's everyone's life and journey looks different. There is no one map or you know, lifestyle or whatever that is successful. Like, I think the more that you focus on yourself and being what you want to be and like being true to yourself is like, I think that that is like the quickest way to success. Yeah. 
also in the age of social media, it's hard not to compare. It yourself. is. It is. Because yeah, mm-hmm. there's sometimes there's numbers attached to that. Of course, and, uh, and yeah. it's a daily thing. It's it's every day. It's it's like it's almost like having an addiction where you have to work on it every day. Because there's days where that's all I do and that's all I think about, and then there's days where I'm like, you know, fine. No, no, I don't need to compare. You know, so it's it's definitely a daily struggle that you have to work on for sure. For sure. Especially when your job is like so tied to social media. Uh But yeah, I think that's a great place to end it. Uh, The lesson I got from you guys is to tie everything into social media and (laughs) and don't take any time for yourself. (laughs) Correct. I've learned. Keep on the grind. Okay. Don't quiet. Don't quiet quit. Don't quiet quit. Yeah. Don't do it. Work yourself to your bones! Yeah. What's life without working? Just a bunch of bones. That's what I say. Hey, that's a Halloween reference. It is. Yeah, I forget that part. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Okay, we can end it. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much for watching. And thank you to Sarah and Colton for stopping by and having a laugh. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and I appreciate you guys sticking till the very end. I had a lovely time with these guests, and more's to come with mildly familiar engager interests. So stick around, and I'll see you next time. Uh, by next time, I mean like the next video, or maybe like a past video. I don't, I don't know how, what how, how YouTube works.